Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Snowflake Summit live from Caesars Forum in Las Vegas. Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. Dave, we have had an action-packed two days here talking with loads of folks. There's been about 10,000 attendees here. The momentum, the excitement for Snowflake, what they're building, what, they're, what they've announced is huge. I tell you, this is a getaway day and there's still a decent amount of buzz going on in the ecosystem here and the exhibit hall. And I was just saying, when you walk around Las Vegas, you'd never know the economy's about to tank. <laughs> With, you know, inflation is on the rise. I mean, Vegas is packed. It is packed. It, a lot of shows going on here. We're excited to welcome Patrick Barch, the Senior Director of Product Management at Capital One Software to the program. Patrick, it's great to have you. Thank you, it's great to be here. So we all know Capital One. I love the commercials. I'm sure you have a, a large say in how fun and creative they are. Talk to us about Capital One Software. This is a new business, software business. It is, and so, um, you know, from our founding days in 1994, Capital One has always recognized the power of data and technology to create differentiated experiences for our customers. Um, but about 10 years ago, we declared that we were going to reinvent the way that we build and use technology. One of the key steps in that journey was migrating from our owned and operated data centers to the public cloud. But in order to do that, we needed to build a number of products and platforms to help us operate at scale because the market just wasn't quite there yet. And so Capital One Software, which we announced last week, woohoo, um, is our first foray into bringing some of those cloud and data management products to market. Talk to us about you, uh, Capital One is one of Snowflake's longest running and largest customers. How does Snowflake help facilitate that? A couple different ways. So first, Snowflake is a, it's a super powerful platform. They've changed the game when it comes to leveraging data at scale in the cloud. Um, we were an early investor. We were, we were one of their biggest customers. Um, they've been a great partner along the way, helping us adopt the platform. Um, but for us, when we adopted back in 2018-ish, um, we realized that with all of this power comes a lot of responsibility. And so we needed to make sure that we were putting good governance and good controls around our usage of Snowflake from the start. And so you know, we, we, we needed to build some, some tools to help us optimize our, our usage of Snowflake. Okay, so you basically said we're going all in on the cloud. You guys have made huge investments in, in, in AWS and obviously Snowflake. And then now you're, you're sort of taking what you did internally and exposing it almost like yep. Like Amazon did, Amazon retail, and then that's how AWS was born. Okay, awesome. Um, what kind of results did you see internally in terms of, uh, uh, the primary benefit, if I understand it, is cost savings, but also better data management, right? Is that right. fair? So the, the totality of what we've built internally covers both cost savings, data management, data security, um, adherence to data privacy legislation. The product that we announced here at Summit um, is really focused on cost optimization for Great. Snowflake. And so uh, with these tools, we've been able to save about 27% on our projected Snowflake costs. Um, we've been able to save our teams about 50,000 hours of manual effort um, by reducing the number of change orders that they have to execute manually through automated infrastructure management. Um, we've reduced our cost per query by about 43%. And so really what these enabled us to do is just get really efficient with how we use the system. Um, you know, w one of the challenges you might run into with Snowflake is, is unexpected costs. And so by leveraging these tools, we've been able to make sure that our costs are predictable and consistent from month to month, which enables us to um, budget appropriately. And, and that's 50,000 hours, person hours over what period of time? Um, a I have to get back to you on the exact amount. I mean, years, months, S several weeks. years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but we're talking about tens and tens of millions of dollars, right? If you, I mean, just assume a hundred bucks an hour for for a person, just fully loaded. Right. right. I mean, I'll just do that math. Um, okay. And twenty percent percent of Snowflake cost. So here's here's the question. Well, well, first of all, what's the vision? What's the like? Give me a five year vision for for the software uh, uh, group at Capital One. We want to bring Capital One's data and cloud management expertise to the masses. Okay. Um, we've spoken to a number of companies that are trying to follow in our footsteps. Um, we've, we've heard again and again that our challenges are their challenges. Um, our, the, the path that we walked is the path that they're trying to walk. And so we are super excited about bringing all of our expertise to the market. So start with cost savings, but the vision transcends cost savings. Absolutely. Going into security, privacy, data uh, management, absolutely. workflow. Absolutely. And the, the, you know, the, the industry is in a super interesting place now where 
it's very fragmented. There's a galaxy of tools out there. You, you look around here, there's hundreds and hundreds of different solutions. But they're point solutions. They're all going after an individual piece of the management puzzle. And what we found was that we needed to create these integrated experiences that were aligned to our team's jobs to be done, not necessarily in terms of you know, a capability like cataloging or quality or entitlements. You know, in order to efficiently operate at scale, you need to string those things together in a way that lets your team get their job done. So my last question on this flow is, I don't know if you're familiar with, you guys may be familiar with um, Sarah Wong and Martin Casado published a piece that got you know, pretty wide uh, viewing and discussion, they were out, out of Andreessen, A16Z, that the cost of goods sold for SaaS companies who are born in the cloud are going to become so overwhelming that they're going to repatriate and start managing themselves. And they use Dropbox as an example. Now Dropbox is storage, so it's very specific niche, you know? And I've talked to many, many companies like Snowflake about this, and they're like, nah, that ain't happening anytime soon. How do you feel about that? Uh, because if you look at SaaS companies that are born in the cloud, their gross margins are, you know, they don't get to 90%, but they're healthy, you know, 75, you know, sometimes 78%, even Snowflake's, you know, end of decade forecast, Scarpelli has it, I think it's 78%. And the reason that it's not higher is because of the cloud cost. You've got to pay the cloud bills. My belief, and I've argued this, is that's okay. I can negotiate cloud bills. I can work with tools like yours over time to keep those down, and the cloud guys are going to be competing with each other. But, but what do you make of that, uh, Patrick? Uh, <laughs> cloud costs aren't going to go down. Data is expanding at an exponential rate. Um, the scale of data today is orders of magnitude versus what it was in on-prem systems. And so, you know, I don't think the cloud providers are too worried because data is exploding at such a, a crazy pace. And so it really becomes about using all of those resources as efficiently as possible. And, and in the cloud where compute is fully elastic, it scales infinitely, instantly, on demand, um, you know, it's all about getting, it's, it's, it's all about making sure that if you're spending more, you're getting more business value, there's not wastage in the system. Same question, but different. Do you feel like strategically, organizations generally in Capital One specifically, will, will, will optimize their time on optimizing or spend their, their effort optimizing the cloud costs, or do you feel like long term, you can actually be cheaper to manage yourself? In other words, our, are cloud benefits of not doing all that heavy lifting offset that potential you know, cost equation? I mean, you save just so much time and effort and headache not having to manage physical infrastructure. And so like, you know, Snowflake, you can write a SQL command to create a database. You can write a SQL command to create a data warehouse. Like, the market will not give up that level of simplicity for managing infrastructure. And so I think at the end of the day, you're going you're gonna to see a focus on efficiency because what you really want your teams to be focused on, your old, your old DBA and data engineering teams, is focused on driving customer value, not in the weeds of infrastructure management. And that's why I think you guys, <clears throat> this is a great business that you're starting. And I think you, I, frankly, I think you're going to get a lot of competition, which is a good thing. It says you're in a great business and you guys are first. So. Talk about the customer experience. You know, we're also, as consumers, demanding. We want to be able to transact ASAP. We want to make sure that, you know, on the swipe fraud detection happens. How does the Slingshot help facilitate and improve the customer experience if I'm transacting or I'm going to sign up or I'm getting a mortgage? So, with Slingshot, um, we enable your company, regardless of what you do, at Capital One, we're, we're a bank, um, to build more personalized experiences for customers in a more cost-effective way. And so Eno is our, our intelligent personal banking assistant. Um, oh, yeah. With Snowflake, we're enable Eno to do way more than we were previously for less than we would have without some of these tools. And that's a huge competitive differentiator because we expect as consumers and of whatever it is, we want a personalized experience right. that's relevant that's going to offer us products and services that might build upon what we've already done. <laughs> it's, it's kind of table stakes these days. Yes. And so with these tools and with Snowflake, we were able to onboard, our business teams were able to onboard over 400 new use cases over, over that same time period. And so really what it's enabled us to do is unlock the innovative power of our company and create more of these customer experiences. How does the customer visualize those, those cost savings and, and, and do, you, do you have some tooling, maybe it's in the works, to help them predict what kind of cost savings they have based on some modeling that you do? And Absolutely. Um, 
So we enable teams to enforce good governance around infrastructure management upfront by building rules and enabling their teams to uh, create warehouses, create databases. And then once that infrastructure is up and running, we give them a whole bunch of dashboards that show transparency and to spend. We enable chargebacks to lines of business. Um, in today's consumption-driven business models, it's hard to reconcile at the end of the month if you spent what you thought you spent and, and data costs have gone from CapEx to OpEx. Um, and it, but not everybody is an expert. And so we look at usage data, we look at usage history, and we come up with recommendations for how you can save money by you know, tweaking this or tweaking that or better optimizing your, your compute. Should we expect you, as you expand your opportunity, to take your expertise and aim it at uh, AWS more broadly, maybe Redshift more specifically, Google, GCP, BigQuery, Azure, what, what, what should we expect there? You know, there's, there's a lot of opportunity to help companies optimize costs across other cloud providers as well. This, this concept of elastic compute isn't just specific to Snowflake. Um, that's certainly one path that we could go down. You know, we have a lot of expertise in, in data management as well, in data privacy, data security, and so that's, that, that's another path as well that, that we have expertise in. And so, you know, I, th I think it's, it's an exciting time. We're in, an, it, it, we're in a, an exciting place, but it's early days. Did you do a working backwards document? <laughs> Can you share that with us? <laughs> Fortunately five, not. Five or 10 years down the road, you may decide to do that, right? Yeah, let me, let me check with my PR person <laughs> to see if, what, right. what I'm allowed to you share here. I mean, <laughs> I think this is going to be a huge success, and, um, and I think it, it, it's, it's, it follows a lot of the things that we've learned from AWS, yep. and you guys have been all in there, and, and uh, you know, it's funny, right? We laugh about working backwards, uh, customer obsession, uh, two pizza teams. I mean, it really has changed the sort of way that we think about yep. developing software and, and managing infrastructures. I, I think you're going to have a, a huge business, and I, I wish you the best. I, I appreciate that, and the, the thing I'll add to that statement is, you know, internal teams are now starting to demand consumer grade experiences for the tools that they use. Yeah, sure. And so one of the things that we did was treat our internal associates like they were external customers. We applied design thinking, we applied product management, we built our experience in terms of what are you trying to accomplish and what's getting in your way, because that's what people have come to expect with all of these consumer experiences. Collaboration. That's right. What, last question for you, what would you say to peers in your um, whatever, same industry, other industries that are really trying to figure out how to get their hands on data to become a data company, what would you advise them? Why should they choose Snowflake? Snowflake gives you so many building blocks out of the box to help you create a, a well-managed data ecosystem. Um, you know, the simplicity with which you can create new infrastructure, define policies for that infrastructure, onboard new users. I mean, it, it, it's one of the platforms in, internally at Capital One that has the highest NPS score. And so, you know, if you're looking to adopt a, a data cloud platform, I mean, Snowflake is certainly high up on the list of what you should be looking at. Awesome. Do you, how do you, um do you consider this a SaaS? Is it a consumption? How do you price for this? So we, we don't have published pricing at the moment, um, it, but it is, it is a SaaS product. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll, what we can share is that it'll, it'll be a you know, small fraction of, of, your, of your total credit spend with Snowflake. And, and you're thinking a subscription? Or, or haven't figured that out yet? Um, it, it'll likely be a, a consumption model based oh. on, you know. Okay. So, so, so I say, you know, it's funny. It's SaaS, I get it, software as a service. But, it, but because it's consumption, I think it's like modern SaaS, if I can say that, you know, it's cloud based yeah. SaaS. And yeah. it, it, you know, it's more important to make sure right now, because we're so early, that we're actually providing the right value to customers. Um, we have a pretty generous trial program going on right now where you can try the, the, the software out for free um, to make sure it, it fits your needs, so. Okay, so you're in trial, right? I should have clarified that. You're yeah, trial the, now, and, yep. and so yeah, of course you haven't figured out exactly how you're going to price it yet. But. The, the, the official posture that we're taking is public preview. Um, we've, we've been in private preview for the last six months. Um, we've onboarded a, a couple of customers who are starting to use the product, and so the, the big announcement this week is we're officially in public preview, come on in. So you got to get product market fit That's before right. you figure out your pricing and before you, then, you, then you're going to scale. Uh, great. What's been the feedback so far? <laughs> Overwhelmingly positive. Um, somebody stopped by the booth and said, oh my God, that's so cool. We've heard a lot of, wow, we need this right now. Um, you know, it's, it, I had pretty, pretty high expectations coming in just based on the value that this has created for Capital One, but I've, I've been blown away by, by what I've heard from the people who've stopped by our booth. 
Awesome. Patrick, thank you for joining Dave and me on the program talking about what you're doing with Capital One Software. Seems like you're just in early innings, but so much potential to come. We wish you the best of luck with that. And you'll have to come back and tell us how it's going. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure. For Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching The Cube. Our day three coverage of Snowflake Summit 22, live from Las Vegas, continues after a short break.